This tech tip will show you how to speed up geometry creation in the VE by using the precision tools, namely grid settings and locks. When we create VE geometry, we are representing enclosed building volumes. This means that we do not need the same level of detail as required for engineering or architectural models. What is more important is that we are very precise when we align spaces, so it's usually best to work by drawing on a grid at a suitable scale for the level of detail, rather than entering coordinates. If we click on the Grid Settings button, we can change the size of the grid independently for the x-axis and the y-axis. We can also change it while we are drawing if we want to zoom in on a detailed area. If we zoom out a lot, we won't be able to see the grid until we make it bigger again. We can turn the grid on or off at any time by ticking the option to show or hide grid. When it is ticked on, it is easier to see the grid if we tick the option to enhance grid. We are also able to use the grid alignment tool to align the grid with a point on the model or a DXF underlay that we anchor it to. Click this button and then click once on the vertex point identified. The grid will immediately shift to align with this point. We can use this together with the button to rotate view, where we can rotate using two points or by angle. We can then align the grid to the rotated model so that we can continue to work orthogonally. When we have finished using the Rotate View option, we can then click on the button again and pick Unrotate View to return to the original rotation. We would then align the grid again. Locks In addition to the grid, we use locks to improve the precision of our geometry. Locks are important because they force the position that the cursor locks onto when we are drawing. As with the grid, we can turn them on or off at any time, even while we're in the middle of drawing a shape. All we need to do is to click on the icon to open the Locks dialog box, and then tick any locks which we want on, and untick any which we want off. We can choose any selection of locks to apply simultaneously, although some locks have priority over other ones. Some of the locks will show the point that they are locking onto with a coloured square. We can set this colour with all the other display colours in Tools, Colour Preferences. On the left hand side of this dialog is a list of locks which we can toggle on and off. These determine what our cursor will lock onto when creating shapes. The first locks on this list are the most commonly used ones and we will usually want to have them ticked on. We can also turn them on and off from their unique icons if we don't want to open this dialog, but we won't see them being ticked and unticked at the dialog if it is open, unless we refresh it by closing and then reopening it. If we choose Grid, it will lock us to the points of the grid at whatever scale it is currently set to. This is great for quickly creating geometry at early design stages. Using axis will lock us to the cardinal axes within the model. As we draw, if the default colors are being used, horizontal lines will show as magenta and vertical lines will show as green. The option for model endpoint will lock on to the nearest endpoint within the model. We normally want to have this on to ensure that spaces are properly aligned with one another. When using the model endpoint lock, Note that if grid is also ticked on, the cursor will lock to the grid in preference to the model endpoint if they differ. The final option on this list is slightly different, in that it is not a lock itself. The show potential snap points is a useful option because it will highlight what you can lock onto based onto the priority assessment of the locks. For example, not being able to lock onto the model endpoint if the grid lock is also on. The locks that we are using don't only impact on drawing shapes. They also affect the construction lines, 
which we can draw using this button. We also have the options to lock onto a construction line endpoint or to the construction line intersections. To lock onto the construction lines when creating a shape, using either one or both options. For the other lock options, be cautious using the DXF endpoint lock. It can override the grid lock so that if there are slight inaccuracies in the DXF underlay, they may cause gaps or slivers or overlaps in the model, which will potentially cause problems with the simulation. The midpoint lock will attach to the nearest middle point of any shape that is already drawn, as we need to close the current lines to construct the shape. This is another lock that is impacted if the grid lock is also ticked on, as the cursor will lock to the grid if there is a grid point closer than the nearest midpoint. The lock for nearest point will simply attach to the nearest point. The perpendicular option does not let you lock to a point that is perpendicular to what is already drawn. Instead, for this option, the line being drawn will show as cyan if it is perpendicular to the previously drawn line of the shape that we are creating. The lock called normal to other is what we need to use if we want to draw a line in our shape that is perpendicular to the side of another shape. If we want to be able to lock onto the perpendicular point, we need to first turn off the lock for the grid. The parallel lock lets us draw a surface parallel to that of another space. First, we move the cursor near the surface which we want to draw parallel to, and then we press Shift. When we let go of Shift and continue drawing the shape, we will see that the line we are drawing shows as yellow, indicating that it is parallel to the surface which we selected. On the right hand side, we also have other options for locks within our model. For the drawing guides, we can choose to lock onto either the X axis or the Y axis or both axes. As we draw, we will then see the lines for the axis that we will lock to appear in grey. Note that the drawing guides are not designed to be used in conjunction with grid snap. The option for angular lock lets us choose an angular increment that we can lock to. As we draw our shape, if we are close to one of these increments, we will see the angle displayed as we draw. Be aware that having the grid option ticked on can make us lock to a nearby grid point rather than to the angle. If we turn off the lock for the grid and turn on the lock for the axes, it's easier to draw to the locked angle or to draw horizontal or vertical lines. This lock can also be turned on and off with its own button where the increment is set in the adjacent drop-down menu. We have to be in an axonometric view to use the drag face lock. This allows us to edit shapes which are already completed by using the drag tool. Once we have clicked on the button, we can see which face is selected to drag as it becomes yellow. Then we can drag it in steps of the defined drag dimension, which makes it easier to accurately edit 3D volumes. This option also has its own button to turn it on and off, and a drop down to set the drag dimension. It also has an associated option for face snapping, which allows us to set the point that we want to drag a face to by snapping it to a line with another face in the model. When we use this option, the face that we are snapping to will also be highlighted in yellow. After creating geometry, it's often a good idea to use the Modeler drop-down menu to go to the model report and run the report to check for any geometry errors before we proceed. These tools collectively speed up our geometry creation and reduce geometry errors for quicker, more precise modeling within the VE. Thank you for watching this quick video on Tech Tips.